Bonnie's Insider is brought to you by Universal Primary Care, providing care to the entire family. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Bonnie's Insider, brought to you by Universal Primary Care. So great to have you with us. I'm your host, Tommy Valentine. Well, it feels like an eternity ago when the NCAA Division I Council approved the November 25th start date of the college basketball season. In a year that has been mired by so much uncertainty and fluidity, the light at the end of this long tunnel for our college basketball programs has never been brighter. There will be Bonnie's Hoops next week, and in just a moment, two of the main voices of the men's basketball program, beat writer J.P. Butler of the Olean Times Herald and longtime radio personality Gary Neese will be in to preview the upcoming season. Later on, we'll dive into Coach's Corner with men's and women's swimming and diving coach Stephanie Fleming, who's in her second stint on the Bonaventure Swimming and Diving coaching staff. And we'll be closing out the show with a trio of former Bonnie's women's basketball players turned coaches in a group alumni spotlight. But to kick things off, we go from the AD's office with an important message from Tim Kenny to Bonna Nation as fall practices come to a close. As we were making our plans for this semester, November 16th was a key date for us where we said we were going to stop all organized practices with the fall and the spring sports. And I can sit here today letting everyone know that we were able to do that. And we were able to do that with very minimal interruptions, which was very, very key. And I think it's a testament to everybody we've had, our staff, student athletes on campus, and how seriously they took this and were able to pull this off. One of the reasons why we selected this date was to give that buffer before these kids went home. Our biggest concern right now is that these kids don't bring a possible virus into their home, which will then spread in different other communities. So by having this week and a half before Thanksgiving, where they're not doing athletic activity, they could just focus on their schoolwork and maintain social distancing and go by all the guidelines, we were able to monitor them so we're not sending them away with the possibility of having the virus. We're taking every step we can to ensure that these kids will be safe and their well-being is all right when they go home to mom and dad. Our testing protocol has been very vigilant. We have tested all of our student athletes regularly. Some of them were random tested, some were on a set schedule as per the guidelines of the NCAA. We've always said from the beginning, we can't be naive to think it's not gonna sneak in. The fact that we've been able to maintain a decent sense of normalcy this semester has been fantastic. The teams have been able to practice, they've had inter-squad scrimmages, just like they would in normal seasons. We've had classes, 90% of them were in person. So that in-person learning is still there. There have been times where you have to adapt to zoom in kids who might be in quarantine. That has gone really, really well. The professors are to be commended on that. The students are to have adapted to it. Even the parents, they understand it and they understand what they're getting here at St. Bonaventure. How seriously we took this pandemic and the measures we took so these kids could have a semester that for the most part is cl as close to normal as you possibly can. So as of right now, both basketballs are still practicing and swimming is practicing because they are what we consider the winter sports. Swimming will probably dial down because there will be a change in their championship season, moving the championship till April. And so there's not as much of a rush for them. So we'll probably ease them down now, whereas basketball is just starting up. So they're practicing. They're under very strict protocols. They're getting tested three times a week. Where we're going into the bubble, they're going to be tested and quarantined and in a safe environment to play some games. And then when they come back home, we will be monitoring and doing the testing as required by the NCAA and New York State. As we look ahead to next semester in 2021, we know there's still gonna be challenges. And there's still going to be a lot of uncertainty as to how this, in terms of athletics, evolves. There's gonna be a lot of fluidness when it comes to this right now, whether it's with schedules, start dates of seasons, those could all change and we have to be ready to pivot when they do change. And that's important for us to know that we have to have that flexibility. It's frustrating at times, but in the end, it's what we have to deal with. And, and so far we've risen to the challenge and I don't see any reason why we won't going forward. And I say us, whether it's the staff, the coaches, the student athletes, we all know that we're gonna to have to be adaptable when it comes to this. And, and when the seasons start to go in 2021, that we're gonna to have to be even more vigilant in what we're doing because there'll be a lot of people playing with possible exposures that we have to make sure are mitigated. Our biggest message is gonna to be to our student athletes, you know, you're gonna have some time off right now, be safe and be smart. Right? You're going home and there's no one there gonna say, hey, you need to fill out a form to every day like you do here to monitor your health. They're gonna to have to do that at home because we want them to be safe and hopefully they have. They've shown they can do it here. 
and we're just making the emphasis that when you get home, you're going to have to do the same exact thing because in the end, if we want to come back and play in 2021, we all want to be healthy and safe and make sure this virus is contained. We all got a big part in that. Parents, student athletes, they've done a great job throughout the semester. It doesn't end when you come home. We have to make sure we follow what we've been doing here at home. So when we come back, we're ready to go and hit the ground like we did in August. And we can't wait for the return to play of all our fall and spring teams in 2021. And on behalf of the entire athletic department here at St. Bonaventure, we'd like to thank all our student athletes for the diligence and hard work they've displayed during this difficult offseason. Well, in case you haven't heard, there's a college basketball season to be played in just over a week, but you can't talk Bonnie's basketball without the two men who have become a staple in Bonnet country for doing just that. We sat down with beat writer J.P. Butler of the Olean Times Herald and radio personality Gary Neese to get their take on a team that is drawing a lot of excitement among Bonnie's fans. I really didn't see any surprises. Uh, what really struck me when I looked at the list was there are 10 teams in the Atlantic 10, they could be champions. I think the league is that good this year. One through 10, anybody can beat anybody given night. To me, it was the, the least surprising year we've had for this in the time that I've been covering the team for the Times-Herald now. And that's primarily because of just how much is back from last year. When you're already that established as a league, mm -hmm. you sort of know then what it's probably going to kind of shape out as the following year. So I look at the fact that the A-10 brings 14 of 18 all-conference guys back those teams at the top we talk about they bring everybody back and right. so it's not like in past years where it's wide open who's it really going to be this year we know that st louis brings basically everybody back from a team that finished the year super strong last year Bonna obviously brings its top six scores back and Dayton, like you said, yeah, they lose a massive loss with the right. National Player of the Year, Tom, mm -hmm. and some other key figures. But even the guys they bring back are still probably good enough to have that team, again, competing for, for uh, an A-10 title. And they bring two top 50 high school players in to replace those guys. Yeah. So, I mean, as, as I said, they, they just retool now. Some of the other ones, uh, Duquesne. I mean, we saw Duquesne. Same. Two Same of the, thing. Two of the yep. best games that I saw in the Atlantic 10 last year were our games with Duquesne. They've got a bunch of guys back. UMass, uh, with the big guy in the middle, uh, Trey Mitchell, he's, he can make a team all by himself. So I really didn't see it any, any big surprises. It just it, What got me was how strong this, this conference is going to be this year. What we're seeing now is sort of the payoff from where three years ago it was really kind of a down year for the league. And that was the year that Bonnet took advantage of by being able to get to the A-10 championship game primarily with freshmen mm -hmm. because everybody was so young at that particular time. Now this year, that same group of people that have been coming through are juniors and seniors. And now I think is where you'll see the payoff of maybe three, four teams that are NCAA tournament caliber. Again, some borderline top 25 teams to start the year in St. Louis and Richmond. This is the payout for kind of the struggles from, from before. You start looking back at the postseason honors and you look and you said, geez, these guys were on this two years ago. That's they're exactly they're perennial right. all conference picks. They're juniors. They still right. have another year to go. And it's gonna be great for the Atlantic Ten. Unfortunately we have this situation where nobody can be in attendance. They'll be yeah. on TV and listening on radio. But for us uh, who have to watch and describe it, it's gonna be fun. That down year when everybody was a freshman, well you saw talent. You saw Oshun jumping out of buildings. You saw Kyle Lofton with his competitive spirit. Dominic Welsh didn't show much early because he was hurt, but at the end of the season, you had to guard him. They had some, some pretty good games in because they weren't the top options. You had Ladarian and Courtney Stocker. Those were the teams that opponents were guarding, and that gave Kyle a little bit of area to move in, and, and you had to see him come in a freshman year. But last year, all of a sudden, it's now they're, they're guarding Kyle. He's the guy. He's the known. Mm -hmm. So so he had to play doubly hard. He doesn't have a Courtney to throw the ball to. But Mark brings in two new guys. He brings he brings in Jaron English. He brings in Justin Winston, A.J. Vasquez. Mm -hmm. They're raw, but you saw at the end of the season, they're playing good basketball. So everybody's excited because this team is going to be together for two years. Yeah. And that, that's where the excitement comes right now. You've got so many guys in this team. We can't watch practice 
because of protocol. Yeah. I would love to be watching practice right now because I think it'd be one of the most competitive practices in the Atlantic 10. There's 10, 11 guys that could start on this team this year. Yeah, the poll side of it, I think what we're seeing now is finally um, Bonna has the respect of the league. This is the fourth time in the last five years that they've been picked to finish within that top five, which as we know, um, gives you an opportunity for that double buy. It's on reputation now kind of too right. because going into last year they had a lot of young guys still they had just lost to Courtney Stockard and Ladarian Griffin and they were still picked to finish within the top five so they they have that reputation now as being one of the top teams in the league but to me just sort of black and white it's about where we would have expected yep. them just from the standpoint that we know St. Louis brings uh, everybody back and that's a Again, Bonner really struggling. And the, the last time they took the, the floor, Richmond um, having everybody back at Dayton, where um, their reputation, obviously, after what they did last year, they're going to be right there as well. And, and Bonner's right still in there with them. So I don't think it's anything that you can really complain about. And as a voting media member for the, the poll, I actually had Bonner third. And I thought, okay, I'm willing to give St. Louis and Richmond those two spots because of what they bring back. But I'm willing to put Bonner right there afterward and, and, and maybe on the same line as some of these other teams because of what they had back with the top six scores. But also having Anthony Roberts and Jalen Attaway, how much better these two guys might mm -hmm. make that team. And I think that proves that what they've been doing the last couple of years. The, the youth movement is actually working, and you see these players improving every year. You don't see too many flatten out or, or drop. You see all these guys are, are improving, making that next step. And it used to be that uh, Abana didn't get the benefit of the doubt. It was uh, a victory. Abana was going to be picked anything better than double digits. There was a stretch there where the only guy who made an all-conference preseason team was Andrew. And now they're starting to get that. Because of the success they've had, they're starting to get the benefit of the doubt, regardless of what they've done the year before, because people just kind of know at this point that a Mark Schmidt coach team is probably going to be in the mix at the end of that particular season and that's where they that's where they are now with it. We'll have much more from JP and Gary in a special Bonnie's Basketball Preview Show later this week. Be watching Bonnie's social media and check back here on the Go Bonnie's TV YouTube page. Better yet, subscribe on YouTube today and receive alerts whenever new Bonnie's videos are posted. We're going to step aside here for just a moment on Bonnie's Insider, but there's still plenty more to come after the break, including Coach's Corner with two-time Atlantic 10 Coach of the Year, Stephanie Fleming. Stick around, you're watching Bonnie's Insider, brought to you by UPC. You'll light candles with strangers the day you arrive and extinguish them with lifelong friends the day you leave this place. A place that will transform your life inside and outside the classroom. A place where you'll learn to care about each other and about others you never imagined caring about. A place where people help you believe in yourself. For 160 years, St. Bonaventure University has helped good students become great people. Away from campus? No problem. You can follow Go Bonnies wherever you are on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Keep up with all your favorite squad. And don't forget to use the hashtag unfurl. Welcome back to Bonnie's Insider brought to you by UPC. There aren't many collegiate coaches in the country who can land a head coaching position not even a year after they graduate from college. And fewer go on to win a Coach of the Year award after just two years on the job and then do it again the next year. That's the kind of success men's and women's swimming and diving coach Stephanie Fleming has had here at St. Bonaventure. And in her second stint with the program, we're beginning to see the same results we saw out of the Bonnies her first time around. Fleming talks about what is led to the team's success in this week's Coach's Corner, sponsored by Energy Mark, and how the Bonnie swimming and diving teams have begun to reestablish themselves atop the Atlantic 10 Conference. 
Summer, spring, summer was the longest I have gone without coaching in a very long time. It was very weird and I missed it. So it's just great to be, to be back and our kids have done a great job of really sticking to the mission and the goal, which is to be in the pool every single day. And the team this year has been a lot of fun to work with. It's actually a relatively young team. You know, Bruno's my sole senior and I've only got one senior and one junior. So it's a very young, vibrant, energetic team. There's a lot of talent in this young group. So I'm really excited to see not just what they do this year, but in the coming years for sure. I think the recruiting aspect of this job was the piece that I needed to learn the most. Being able to coach the X's and O's of diving, I knew that, but I learned so much just about recruiting in general, but then also about managing a team and the different personalities of the team, who I was going after as far as, okay, I want someone that's talented that's going to help our team get better at A-10s, but I also want someone that's a good person that's going to be a great addition personality-wise to our team and someone that will be proud to, to say that they're a Bonnie and that they're part of our alumni going forward. And when I came back in 17, 18, just went all out with recruiting to make sure that we started bumping up the, the guy's side. And Bruno has been an amazing team leader from the get-go. You know, I couldn't have done it without him. I think our team in particular does a really great job of coming together as like one cohesive team. You know, there's some swimming and diving teams out there that have a hard time doing that. But I think the strength in the bond that we have as a coaching staff, you know, between myself, Skip, and Laura, and then the strength and bond that our athletes have with each other makes all the difference. You, you can do one sport and then the other sport and then come, you know, at the end of the day, be like, okay, cool. But when you can kind of come together and do it together and support each other, it just makes the whole team stronger. And when we have, you know, five, six guys that can potentially all be in the top eight or very close to it, you know, that's a ton of points for, you know, at A-10s versus in most swimming events, you're lucky if you get one, two, maybe three guys or girls in the top eight or top 16. So, you know, we may only be two events, but we usually can get a lot of people in that top 16 group and scoring a lot of points. I mean, I grew up in Michigan. I grew up a Michigan fan. <laughs> you know, it was kind of the, the big place that I wanted to go. And so when I got a chance to be a recruited walk-on, you know, it was a dream come true. Um, being in that kind of environment, getting to watch Olympians on a daily basis and, and really learned a lot and, and grew as an athlete. And I think it really helped set me up for, for coaching. So I had had a little bit of coaching experience when I was in college. It was definitely a little intimidating knowing that I was gonna be coaching kids that were you know, only a year or two younger than me when I got here. And I can still remember my first day and just sitting there watching the divers on the board thinking, oh my gosh, I'm here, I'm doing this, how's this gonna go? You know, but you just take it one day at a time. The team was great, they responded to me immediately. I think it helps when you can relate to your athletes that way, especially when you're first starting out. Mike Murphy in particular did so great that first year winning a title and after that, I was hooked. <laughs> you know, that was that was one of those aha moments that blew me away that I was just as excited seeing him win an A-10 title as I ever was for any of my own personal accomplishments. Now, at that point, you didn't see the scores constantly updating in real time. So the meet got done and we had to wait for the scores, prints off, and I'm looking at the paper and just like, oh my God, his name's on, on top. <laughs> You know, but everyone did so great that year. And then the next two years, you know, everyone just got better and better. I mean, winning Coach of the Year was, was an awesome accomplishment, but it pales in comparison to, you know, my kids winning A-10 titles and winning points for our team. And, and the 2013, when we won the A-10 title, I mean, that was just magic. That was, everything fell into place, you know. Each day we just got stronger and stronger as a team. And, you know, I remember talking to Coach Mack the, the night before the last day of the meet and we knew we had it in our back pocket. We just needed to coast and keep things strong and jumping into the pool with the whole team at the end of the meet was 
beyond awesome. I'll, I'll remember that forever. And Fleming has plenty of returning talent to work with this season, including senior Michael Bruno, who earned two first place finishes in the one meter dive last season, and junior Matthew B. Lobredek, who twice earned first place in the three meter dive. We're winding down here on Bonnie's Insider, but the best is still to come. After the break, it's our alumni spotlight times three, as we chat with a trio of former women's basketball players who are now making their ways up the coaching ranks. You're watching Bonnie's Insider, brought to you by UPC. Western New York is known for energy innovation. Today, Energy Mark is leading the way for the next generation of renewable energy. At Energy Mark, we help power Western New York homes and businesses with low cost, locally produced energy, including renewables like solar and wind power. Energy Mark, the official energy supplier to the Buffalo Bills. Connect your account to Energy Mark at buylocalenergy.com. Schultz is always at your service, ensuring your vehicle gets the maintenance it requires. Now, with modern, touchless options across the entire auto care experience. Speak with a service advisor on the phone or at one of our newly envisioned service centers. Pay invoices online or via mobile app. And drive home in confidence knowing Schultz only permits limited personnel access to your vehicle. Exceeding expectations is our mission. That's why the next generation of auto care is already here at Schultz. Welcome back to Bonnie's Insider, brought to you by UPC. Many Bonnie's basketball alums have found success away from the court following their playing days, but few have done so as a group, like former women's basketball players turned coaches, Priscilla Edwards, Tiara Johnson, and Jess Jenkins. Each was instrumental in WNIT and NCAA tournament runs with the Bonnie's during their playing careers, and have later moved into coaching roles, first at St. Bonaventure, and now in the Big East, all together at Providence. We chat with the trio in this week's alumni my spotlight. To be honest, coaching was not a goal for me. I had two dreams. One was either to go play basketball overseas somewhere or be a marketing executive. Honestly, that was my dream to, to be able to market and and be this big exec with the nice cars and the, in a penthouse and stuff like that. So that was my dream the whole time. I never had intentions to be a coach until I got injured and it was more of a mental game for me. And I just found the excitement in that and it drew me to that more than my marketing pursuit. I was playing, got injured my senior year and had to redshirt. And during that year, I just kind of really, I got a chance to see what coaches do behind the scenes. And I started to think more about it. And after I played my fifth year, I had an opportunity to get into it and, um, and didn't look back from there. I still feel like it was impactful enough for me to, to be grateful for it. And that's something that's really important to me. It's just being able to look back regardless of like the little details of it and know that like, because I gave my all to it, like now I'm in a position to continue to, to help others from it. I try to share as much as possible the fact that it doesn't matter whether you're a 30 point scorer or you break all these records. If you're able to kind of look back at it and know you had some good and some good times and you made some great friends and, and are able to have a career from it, that's, that's not a pretty bad trade off. Whether it's with our kids that we are coaching right now or even in recruiting, even sometimes the kids you don't get in recruiting, you know, the relationships you're able to build in that I think is probably like the funnest part still for me. The recruiting class that we're about to bring in, I feel really good about the relationships that I was able to build with that recruiting class. Every day is tough with coaching. Uh, I think the biggest thing is just the day-to-day the -day wins and losses that you take. Everything from recruiting to just balancing how daunting coaching and in the season is, the highs and lows of it, and, and, and trying to stay level with that. One thing that I took away from Bonaventure is how to always do more with less, how to accomplish things without what people necessarily say you need for success. For all of us, like we went to Bonaventure for different reasons. We knew Bonaventure wasn't like the most glamorous situation as players, especially as coaches, because nowadays when it comes to recruiting, you know, it's about what can you sell? Like, look at the facilities, look at all these nice things we have. And we didn't necessarily have that at Bonaventure, but nonetheless, it wasn't about that. It was about, you know, just going somewhere and it being about proving people wrong. It being about just making it happen regardless of what you don't have. For us, whenever we had an opportunity to, to compete and show what we could do, regardless of what we didn't have, we, we took really great pride in that. I remember stepping on St. Bonaventure's campus and being like, yo, like, how are we gonna like 
achieve and accomplish all these things. One of the things that our class looked up and was like, oh, all these banners are for the men's, you know, the men's side. So our, our goal was just to get as many as players, get as many, you know, as possible. And so to be able to accomplish that, as, start to accomplish that as a player, but to make the NCAA tournament and, and advance to the Sweet 16 was like an incredible, like, experience that I'll never forget. When we found out we made the WNIT for the first time, I remember like we had a solid year and we didn't think we were going to make the NCAA tournament, but we knew we kind of had a shot for the WNIT. And we literally sat outside the office and waited for the NCAA tournament to select so that we could see if we made the WNIT. And we found that like, I don't know, it was like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. And we were so excited. It was like we won, you know, a championship because we knew that we accomplished that goal, which was to make some type of postseason and, and turn the program around. I think the three of us work really well together. And the fact that we know when one of us might need a little bit more energy or when one of us has a little bit more energy and or they've got a little bit extra that day, whatever it is, like, we have to pick each other up in some way or I got to be like, look, T, I, I need something today. Like sh I know she's going to be able to bring it for me. So I think that helps us all like be better at our own jobs because we trust each other so much. I know we can't stand each other, you know, or we're like over each other and need a break, but that's like anybody. But when it comes to what we're all trying to accomplish in our goals, like that's something that has not changed. You know, we all decided to come to Providence because we believe in Coach Crowley and we believe in, you know, his ability to build programs and turn them around and develop young women to be strong and resilient. So as much as we try to, you know, instill those things in, in our players, we know that it wouldn't be possible if, if, if we didn't fully believe in Coach and he didn't believe in us. So a large part of, you know, what we do is, is based around that. You have the ability to do it at Bonaventure just because of like the location and everything is like you just have to outwork people. Not everybody's going to see it and not everybody is like peeking into the RC every day or like hanging out in the reds to see what you're doing or how much you're working. But when you get a chance to like P said play a ranked opponent or when all of a sudden the, the lights are really bright in a big moment, like you're prepared for it because of your the time and just the ability you have there to to outwork people. And I think that that's definitely carried through now for me um, and something I learned at Bonaventure. The thing for me was being who I am and not hiding that, right? And not being afraid of that and not trying to change who I am to get a job or to impress someone, right? Yeah, I got to continue to, it's either I'm going to get the job who I am or I'm not going to take the job at all because they're not going to accept me for who I am anyway. So it, it was good for me to, to be able to be free and live free at Bonaventure as a player. And then as I transitioned from player to on staff, it was just like, hey, you are who you are, open arms. Please show that. That's a great example. Don't be afraid of showing that. And I feel like that was the biggest takeaway I had from Bonaventure is like, they allowed me to be who I am and who I am has brought me to the success I am now. For us, whenever we had an opportunity to, to compete and show what we could do, regardless of what we didn't have, we, we took really great pride in that. And I think that's something that continued on with me because I, I came from not having much anyway. And so you can still accomplish anything you want to accomplish, regardless of what you have, especially material things or, you know, things like that. So. Bonaventure definitely was a, a big part of my mentality of just making things happen regardless of your circumstance. The Providence women's basketball staff truly has a Bonnie's feel with former longtime head coach Jim Crowley, who served with St. Bonaventure for well over a decade, leading the way along with Bonaventure graduate and former director of basketball operations, Jenny Nabrizny, who's now in that role with the Friars. That's all the time we have for Bonnie's Insider this week, but another edition is headed your way next Monday. Here's what you have to look forward to. It's a Bonnie's Hoops kind of week for next week's rundown, featuring junior guard Jaron Holmes. He's still the same great player he was a year ago, but he'll have a different name on the back of his jersey. We'll be learning the story behind the name change. And we get a preview of the upcoming basketball season from the man who knows the Bonnie's better than anyone, head coach Mark Schmidt. Trust me, you won't want to miss that show. Thanks again to everyone who tuned in this week. I hope to see you right back here when Bonnie's Insider returns. I'm Tommy Valentine. So long and thanks for watching. Bonnie's Insider has been brought to you by Universal Primary Care, providing care to the entire family.